Hey, yo, from the Kingdom of Ohio, I am Ryan Thomas, and yes, yet again, I'm changing the name of this feed, or channel, or podcast, or project, or story, or whatever you want to call it. Honestly, I gave no thought to what I wanted this thing to be called when I first started back up a couple months ago. I had originally envisioned this whole detox thing as a, let's call it, a transitional blog project that I was going to work on after I decided to step away from a culture for, uh, let's call those, personal reasons. And so that's what I did. I wrote the first detox blog in early March 2020, right before the COVID pandemic kicked off worldwide. And selfishly, I have to say, I nailed a few things in that blog post about what I thought was going to happen with the coronavirus nonsense. And I also got pretty vulnerable with myself and with whoever chose to read it. But when I began to get the podcast itch again, like I said, I just didn't give it any thought. I already had the detox domain. I'd already given up the O'Culture podcast domain, so it just seemed like the quickest, easiest, cheapest way to get something back online. But quick, easy, and cheap usually equals shit. And not that the interviews I've done are shit. I don't think they are by any means. Although one person did make it known to me that they were unhappy with my direction of promoting anti-scientific paranoia, whatever that means. Sounds like something a scientism cult member would say, and you just gotta brush those things off. Not my problem if these types don't know how to think for themselves or question authority. What is my problem, though, is trying to find a name that encapsulates what I want to talk about. You know, I have specific things I want to dig into that have nothing to do with the occult, so occulture doesn't make much sense anymore, and I want to talk about things that have nothing to do with health and detoxing and whatever detoxing really means in this context, so that doesn't make sense anymore. But I know I wanted an outlet that could just blanket my interests without tying me down. Can't use my name, really, because I'm not famous and don't want to be. Some of you may know that I'm a creative writer, both by trade and by hobby. In fact, after I wrote that initial detox blog post, which was about the movie Parasite and me tying that to coronavirus in real time before it even happened. Again, something I'm selfishly proud of, for better or worse. But after I wrote that, I started writing some fiction, some screenplays, actually. I've got three of them done with a fourth and a fifth at different stages of completion. And I want to tell you about one of the screenplays that I finished because it's going to play into this whole renaming exercise. But first, some context. One of my all-time favorite movies is a 1990 film called Pump Up the Volume stars Christian Slater as an anti-authoritarian high school student who takes on an alter ego as a pirate radio host who becomes super popular with his fellow students. It's a great snapshot of Gen X, and it honestly may have invented the medium of podcasting. It's a really cool flick, great soundtrack, unauthorized soundtrack, I should point out, very much channeling the spirit of the film itself. So I was sitting around one night last year while the world collectively lost its mind, heart, and spirit, and I decided to put the movie on and just fade into a night with one of my favorite films. But as the film unfolded, I thought to myself, what would this movie look like now if it came out today? And so I sat down and I wrote that movie. I called it The Downcast, which also has a double meaning. It was the name of a podcast hosted by the main character, who is a college student at a small liberal arts school in Ohio. But downcast also means low-spirited, dejected, depressed, pessimistic. And I thought, what a great word to describe Gen Z these days. Gen Z, by the way, what an interesting label for that generation. I'll let you connect the dots on that one. Anyway, so I wrote the downcast. It turned out decent. I wrote a second draft that turned out better, and that's currently where it stands. But in the story, I wanted to create a fictional town in Ohio where the story was set, and I racked my imagination for way too long thinking about this one detail. But the name I settled on was Lieber, Ohio. Now, some of you may be familiar with that word Lieber in one of its meanings because it means book in Latin, or more specifically, a book of records. Several popular occult books carry that word in their titles. But I like what Lieber means beyond that, because Lieber also means free. And Liber is also the name of the god of wine, fertility, and freedom in ancient Roman religion and mythology. In fact, and this is from Wikipedia, so, you know, take it with many grains of salt, perhaps, but Liber has a festival called Liberalia on March 17th, which is associated with free speech and the rights attached to coming of age. And when I came across that, I was like, fuck, what a great name, thematically speaking, for my fictional Ohio town that my college student podcaster lives in. So that made its way into the script. But now I'm thinking, you know what? That's actually a great name for this podcast, Lieber Ohio. Not only because I feel freer now than I ever have, and not just because a lot of the subjects I want to cover are facilitating freedom from this dying Matrix metaverse, and not just because I'm from the kingdom of Ohio, but also because I honestly feel like I'm just now coming of age myself. 
I feel like the things I've been learning about on my own the last several years are the things I wish I was taught when I was an adolescent and a teenager and a 20-something. But it wasn't until I reached my 30s that I really became exposed to the things I needed, and that's when it all started to make sense. Slowly, for sure. And some of it I'm still trying to make sense of. But I'm doing the damn thing, you know? And just in time, too, because if I didn't have this foundation or this discernment as 2020 unfolded, who knows where I'd be now? But digging into things like religion and spirituality and the power of art and creativity and the imagination and holistic health and wellness, natural law, natural sciences, this feels good. It's very different from the world I grew up in, but it feels good. I mean, shit, I'm huffing Brown's gas, I'm writing screenplays, I'm learning how to properly wield swords and firearms, I'm making Organite, I'm taking ice baths, I'm drinking my own urine. I mean, these are the things that I'm just naturally gravitating toward now. I just bought a book about the art of blacksmithing. I've never been interested in blacksmithing in my life. Never. But for some reason, I find this book in a half price books, and I'm like, you know what? Blacksmithing sounds cool as fuck, and I want to learn more about that. Hell, any sort of smithing sounds cool as fuck to me now. And you're probably wondering about the urine, too, and we'll get to that soon, best believe. But I digress. I think my point is, I don't know who the heck this guy is, but I like him. Because I've been indecisive for a long time. And this dude is not indecisive at all. And that's always been one of my biggest flaws, this indecisiveness. And it's a common flaw in many of us, for sure. But this new version of me, he's just doing things. And they're fun things. They're what I like to call consciousness-enhancing things. Practical things, hands-on things, things that will help me build a better life for myself and hopefully contribute to a better way forward for the human collective. Even though, sadly, I don't think all of us are going to make it there. And I'm not naive enough to think I'm for sure going to make it there because I can easily get sucked back into the Matrix metaverse just like anyone else. But I'm finding the temptation to participate in that lifestyle to be considerably less than it was at this time even last year. And it just lessens by the day. Now what's all this got to do with a podcast name? Well, everything. Because these are not just conversations with interesting people about interesting things. This is my life on tape. Which reminds me to mention that I hope my patrons who are hearing this have physical media players. Because I'm contemplating doing some stuff with either cassette tapes or CDs or even vinyl if I can sort out the cost of it. Kind of tired of the internet, you know? But back to the name. Truthfully, I was never a fan of the old culture name. It was just a word I thought sounded cool and would be good for SEO so people could find the show easily. That's my shameless marketing background at work or my shameful marketing background. You would think that I would think these things through a bit more before launching back into them, but I don't always do that either. But I have been giving this a serious think for the last two months, and I thought, you know what? If I'm going to make this change, I need to do it now before I get too far into this. And I need to be confident in my decision and commit to it, and I'm making this sound like a relationship all of a sudden. But it is exactly that. This whole thing is a reflection of the relationship that I have with myself, and with God, or the universe, or nature, however you want to look at it. I think I just prefer to call it the Creator. But that's why the interim audio projects took the names of the four classical elements. Scroll back in the feed, you'll find air, earth, fire, and water. And I did my best to represent those elements in the interviews I was doing over the last two months. Beta Austin was water, Matt Landman was air, Mitch the Orgone donor was earth, Heather Shepard was fire. I do like Easter eggs, and there's plenty of them available if you're paying attention. But I digress again. Basically, I don't want to be detoxing the rest of my life. That's rough, man. I want to be free. And fuck, I am free already, and so are you, and we're going to be free together. So consider the phase known as detox over, and consider this the official christening of the land of Liber in the kingdom known as O-Hi-O, where I, Ryan Thomas of House Peverly, am your tour guide. And our first stop on the tour? Well, it just has to be flat earth, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. So until then, you know what to do. Love yourself. Think for yourself and reclaim authority.